Hello everyone, today we're going to be doing our first species review or species overview and I've actually picked a really exciting species, the Chili Rasbora or Borarus brigitte, I think that's how you say the scientific name. Alright, so let's take a look. So this is just one of the several Chili Rasbora that I have. Uh, I do believe that I have seven. This one is the least shy out of all of the ones that I have. And so let's just begin with, you know, a few basics about them. So they are endemic to southwestern Borneo uh, in South Kalimantan. That's the Indonesian province that they're from. I'm sorry if I butchered that name. It says it's, you know, and then according to my reading, their range extends westward as far as the Jela, Jela Bila River Basin. And again, I'm sorry if I'm butchering these names. Basically, they inhabit black water streams, you know, peat swamps, things like that. So their natural habitat is going to be very full of organic substances. They, if you can mimic a black water habitat, you know, full of leaf litter, uh, a few plants, that would make them feel most comfortable and most at home. Um, basically, these environments are, for the most part, pretty acidic. Um, soft, you know, acidic water, dimly lit due to the tannins of the water, and then marginal vegetation. Um, and actually, across Southeast Asia, these habitats are under threat, you know, from development, I believe from like palm plantations, things like that. Um, Let's see, they prefer, you know, water temperatures from 20 to 28 Celsius or basically 70 to about 78 degrees Fahrenheit. pH, you know, 4.0 to 7.0. So definitely acidic water, which is more so what this aquarium of mine stays at. Just because I do keep crystal black shrimp in there and crystal red as well. Um, my blue diamond strain of shrimp is in here you know, and a number of ram's horn snails, and also the emerald dwarf rasboros, one of my other really, really favorite fish. But you can actually just see the scale of how tiny these little things are. Um, and I can put my hand, and they are absolutely tiny. Great for nano tanks and great for small desktop aquariums. I would even go as far as say these would be good in something as small as like a two gallon, you know, um, definitely want to filter, of course. And then, of course, there are some that are hiding behind these plants. You can see that some have better coloration than others. They are still just getting used to this aquarium. I've recently acquired them, actually. But recently acquired them. Now, as far as feeding goes, it may be a little tricky to get them to eat. So far, what I've been doing is feeding mine uh, the micro, walter, and banana worms. They seem to readily accept those. They kind of, they will accept grindle worms, more so the smaller grindle worms. Uh, also, you know, powder diets. My powder diet for, from North Fin. Uh, that's one of my favorite things to feed, these small things. And... You know, just things like that. Of course, crushed flakes would be accepted, but they readily and quickly go after things like the micro worms, water worms, and banana worms. Um, now, as far as like keeping tank mates with this little fish, and as you can see, they keep darting in and all of the plants. I'm trying to keep the camera kind of focused on them. But basically, as far as tank mates go, they don't make a good community fish. And the reason why is because many things can bully them, intimidate them. Uh, you know, definitely not something like angelfish. Angelfish would snack these up and, you know, just like this would be a snack for angelfish. You know, small fish such as uh, Microdivario, Sunda Danio, uh, Danionella, Pygmy Corridoras, uh, Asian Stone Catfish, you know, other small nano fish. Otto Senclus would be good tank mates. Crystal Black Shrimp. You know, as you can see, I have those in there, of course. You know, like I've said earlier, uh, Emerald Dwarf Rasboras, Badis would be good, you know, tank mates. Just something that's very small and can't really bully them would be the best for them. 
Uh, as far as sexual dimorphism, males are males are supposed to be way more attractive, gaining a very brilliant red coloration, very very beautiful. Females are supposed to be rounder bellied and a little larger than males and a little bit drabber than males as well. Um, it's an egg layer, you know, it scatters eggs everywhere. Doesn't have any parental instincts for the most part. Um, when kept in good conditions, you know, for, I've honestly not had experience breeding these, but you know, I know some people on YouTube may have like Rachel O'Leary, I believe she's had experience with breeding these things. And if I'm not mistaken, if kept in the right conditions, they will readily breed. Um, most people use like grass type matting for them. The pH they usually do around like 5.0 to 6.5. Uh, tons and tons of Java moss would definitely help. And I think that's about it. Alright, thank you for watching and please subscribe.